If you've ever been stranded on islands populated by naked little man babies and overseen by a three-faced mechanical god, then you probably have a pretty good idea of what to expect from Cargo, the quest for gravity. For everyone else, it's surely one of the most bizarre experiences you can have, in a video game or otherwise. Although its sheer strangeness makes it initially intriguing in a what the hell kind of crazy stuff is going to happen next sort of way, the gameplay isn't interesting enough to make this surreal journey a trip worth taking. It's impossible to explain Cargo's premise without sounding like a crazy person. You play as Phlox, a mechanic aboard the Hippo, a blimp delivering a cargo of machine parts to some remote islands. Some of the small, naked inhabitants of the islands are so excited by the blimp's arrival that they rocket up into the air and burst into explosions of pure fun. These explosions bring the Hippo down, though the pull of gravity is so weak that Phlox plummets safely to the ground. She soon comes to understand that the inhabitants, called buddies, exude fun when they're having a good time, and that this fun can be collected like currency and spent to restore gravity to the world, bringing famous landmarks like Big Ben and the Statue of Liberty down from the stratosphere and back to the Earth. So Phlox sets about to earn fun from the buddies and restore gravity to the planet. You earn your first meager amounts of fun by running around after buddies and giving them a good kick in the backside to send them flying. The little guys love that. Soon, you're prompted to spend the fun you've earned on the parts you need to build a motorboat. For the motorboat, and the cars, submarines, and flying machines you'll need later in the game, you can either instantly assemble vehicles to the specifications of any blueprint you've found, or you can try building your own vehicles from scratch. You can also start with a vehicle based on a blueprint, and then tinker with it. It's easy to build vehicles. The joints you purchase and collect can be linked together to build a framework, and motors, propellers, balloons, and other components can be snapped right on. Unfortunately, there's little incentive to spend time constructing your own creations. There's never any need to build vehicles that are bigger, faster, or stronger. You can accomplish every goal adequately by using blueprints to construct the most basic version of whatever type of vehicle you need. If you enjoy tinkering, you might get a little joy out of designing your own vehicles, but this aspect of the game is poorly incorporated into the whole. And the vehicles, which can only be controlled with the keyboard, just aren't that fun to use. Cars feel detached from the ground, submarines are painfully slow, and helicopters are frustratingly floaty. Eventually, you spend some of your hard-earned fun to bring an iceberg crashing down to Earth, which freezes over the ocean surface and brings about the onset of winter. At this point, you must trade in your boat for a car and spend time crashing into the huge penguins who rode the iceberg down from the sky. Here, the initially charming strangeness of the game's objective starts to lose its luster, and the goals you're presented with are more likely to have you scratching your head than smiling. You're presented with a bunch of odd little tasks over the course of the game, like tossing junk into pipes and playing a simple rhythm game. These moments are in keeping with the game's surreal vibe, but are too simple to be engaging. Additionally, ferrying buddies around becomes a frequent part of your work, and although it's initially funny to see a chain of the goofy-looking creatures trailing from your vehicles, this novelty quickly gets old, and you start to feel like a taxi driver doing mundane jobs. It's also not always clear what your next task is, so you waste time wandering around until you stumble on something that moves the story forward. There's always a line of text at the bottom of the screen indicating what you should be working on currently, but these statements are often misleading or flat-out wrong. A map or a waypoint that indicated the location of your next objective would have kept things moving along. You'll also wrestle with the controls during your time with cargo. It's often a chore just to get Phlox to jump up onto a ledge a few inches high. Cargo is 20 bucks, and its unique visual design and bizarre gameplay make it a game you won't soon forget. Unfortunately, not enough of your memories will be good ones to make this surreal experience worthwhile.